Good morning. Happy to be back. I appreciate Brooke filling in for me the last couple of days. We're here for the one-year Bible study. For those of you that look for that Bible, it is the one-year Bible. It's copyrighted by Tyndale, one-year Bible. Um, that's the book that we're reading, actually. This is what it'll look like. Um, the one that I showed you is a wide margin one that I use to write in the margins with. But we're reading <clears throat> so many of the wonderful old stories we're reading today about Jacob and his wife, uh, uh, Rebecca. Rachel. 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 Rachel, sorry, Rachel. We just talked about Rebecca. <laughs> um, Jacob and Rachel this morning. And it starts off Gen Genesis 35. Um, starts right off that says, then God said, and how many of you know that that's what we live for? We, we live for knowing what God said. God said, but be careful. Sometimes when God says, it doesn't go along with our plans. What we thought God's plan was for life, what we had planned out for our life, and I think that was probably the case here with Jacob and, well, I've got myself messed up about his wife. Rachel, Jacob and Rachel, Jacob and Rachel, Rebecca was his mama. Jacob and Rachel, Jacob, Jacob and Rachel. Then God said to Jacob, get ready and move. And I couldn't help but think about what Rachel thought. What did Rachel think? Hmm. Get ready and move. Now, this is quite an ordeal. Um, so Jacob told everyone in his household, verse 2, get rid of everything you've ever known is what he's telling them. Give up everything you've ever known. I'm sending you. We're going. God said go, and we're going. But I also, this morning, was reminded also about the history here. Remember, Jacob and Esau are twins. And uh, Esau sold Jacob his birthright <clears throat> for a pot of stew. <clears throat> and then Jacob stole uh, the blessing from his father um, by disguising himself as Esau and went in on his father's deathbed and got the blessing. Do you remember that? And so Jacob had to flee. He had to, had to, he had to leave, and it wasn't because God said at that time, it's because he did wrong. He had to leave because his brother Esau was going to um, kill him. And so time has moved on to the point even this morning, January 17th, we have a hard time remembering just a few days back what all happened between Jacob and Esau. And so here we are now. <clears throat> Jacob has the love of his life. Esau is married and has many, many, many children. In fact, this morning's Old Testament reading ends up with all of the begats of the begats. Who, who is the descendant of who? The descendants of Esau's oldest son, Eliphaz, become the leaders of the clans of, and it goes on and on and on and on. And, and this is what I thought about this morning. So first of all, it was God said to Jacob, get ready to move. He said, go. <coughs> I send you out. And then Jacob told not just Rachel, but the entire household that they had to give up everything, including their idols. What they worshipped as gods. They had to give them up. I mean, grandma's old-fashioned jewelry chest that contained every little sentimental thing I ever had about grandma, they had to give it up. They had to give up their favorite Sunday morning best dress. They had to give up their favorite tools. Um, they had to give up their skill saw. They had to give up. You get what I'm saying? God said go. And they went. You want to talk about a woman completing her husband. You want to talk about a godly marriage. It doesn't anywhere in here say that uh, Rachel gave him a hard time about this move at all. They went. And then, and then, as God so often does for us, when we're, when we're so anxious to hear his word, 
We want to hear him talking to us. We all want to know that we know that we know we are doing what he wants us to do. And he says it. He says, go, just like he told Jacob. Then in verse 11, he came back and then God said, I am El Shaddai, God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. You will become a great nation, even many nations. And it goes on. And, and God spoke to Jacob. He gave him reassurance that, yes, he's doing what he wants to do. That's why I look for guiding scriptures um, uh, before I go and do anything. Lynn Western's on here with me. I love her. She will forever be in my heart. Um, Lynn was the human resource manager in um, the Louisiana district when God told Tom and I, go. We were to go. Uh, God's the one that spoke and sent us to Louisiana after the hurricanes. Uh, Hurricane uh, Katrina had hit New Orleans. Hurricane Rita had hit uh, Lake Charles, and God said, go. And, and, and when, that, when God says, go, you do it. But, but because I wanted to make sure, I wanted to know, I wanted to know that I know that God was having me make such, such a major move I asked him to, to, to give me a, a confirming scripture. And he gave me scriptures for every move that we made. Every move. There's only one time in the 17 years Tom and I have been married that I didn't get scriptures to guide me through all of the moves that we made. And we moved a lot. And that was when we came back to Oklahoma. Uh, and I don't know why. I don't know why I didn't get a scripture. Uh, I definitely got a word and I got confirmation and confirmation and confirmation. And that's my point, is that when God says, one of the ways you know it's him is he doesn't change his mind. He doesn't go, oh, turn right. Oh, I meant left. No, wait a minute, go straight. That, that is not the way God does things. That's confusion, and we do not serve a God of confusion. God is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He is the most consistent thing that ever has been or ever will be. He doesn't change. He is the same, always the same. When he speaks, he speaks only truth. He speaks truth to us, and he will confirm it for us in his word, which is what he did um, when he spoke to uh, Jacob. He gave him com uh, com confirming. I mean, you know, I can get it that Jacob and, and Rachel was one, and that Rachel loved her husband and she knew he was a man of God. She'd experienced that. I mean, Tom and I have experienced that. 17 years together, and when Tom tells me he senses strongly that he knows that God wants us to do something, I don't question that anymore. Um, and the only time I ever did question it was my immaturity, not, not because he didn't hear. It was my lack of faith that would cause me to question. And it's likewise. When I say, oh, I feel like God wants, then, then Tom is right there with me. And so I can get it that Rachel was right there with him through all this, but this was his entire household. He had uh, servants that he had children with. He had lots of children. We read about that. And the children had children and they had servants. When we're talking about the whole household, we're talking about quite a little clan. And don't you know there was murmuring and complaining going on? You know, when you know that you know that you know that your creator is wanting to lead you in a certain way, there'll be opposition. That's why having that confirming word is so powerful. It's so powerful. But now I want to finish up what God really laid on my heart about Jacob. Because uh, it, it goes through the story, and it's a wonderful story. I love it. Then it finishes up. Verse chapter 36 is all about the descendants of Esau and Jacob because it ends up being the 12 tribes. And um, it spells it out. <coughs> Very detailed. It spells out who was the father of who. Who was the descendant of who. It's one reason I know family is important to, to God. I, I do not believe that it is God's best for a family not to be united. Um, Family is important to God. He chose family to, to, to be the lineage of his son. He chose family. 
and he traces it and it's it's upheld its validation through the years even though they've tried to discredit this word this book it is the most um, tested piece of literature that's ever been created and they cannot disprove it they can't they've tried they cannot disprove the word of god <clears throat> and so family is important to god but here's 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 what god laid on my heart remember back just a few days ago when jacob bought esau's birthright which was only to go to the firstborn son and then he stole the blessing from his brother esau and esau was so angry he wanted to kill and he would have killed jacob he would have killed him one brother killing another brother and and i'm I, i'm just <clears throat> reminded of those times when there's been a conflict whether it's been a conflict in family whether it's been a conflict with a friend a co-worker somebody at church um, Conflict is all around us. We can't get outside of conflict. But there's many of us that no longer go to church because somebody said something. There's many of us that no longer go to family reunions because so-and-so did so-and-so. There's many of us that's been wronged. All of us have, have been wronged. There is none of us alive that haven't had wrong things done to us to the point that at times we had murder in our hearts. Um, and that was the case with Jacob and Esau. And Jacob fled, <clears throat> and he built his life, and then he came back, and Brooke did a great job talking about what links Jacob went to to apologize to his brother Esau. I mean, he, by this time, Jacob is wealthy. He's got lots of sheep and goats. Remember, he had worked for his father-in-law, and God blessed him. God's hand was on everything he touched was blessed. <coughs> and he gathered up all these blessings to give to Esau with the hopes that Esau would forgive him. And when he approached Esau, <coughs> Esau accepted him. Um, there, there wasn't a fight. There, he didn't kill him. So here we are now. We've advanced way beyond this because now we're talking about the descendants of Jacob and Esau, and this is what came to my mind. <coughs> Excuse me, there's a reason Brooke filled in for me. <laughs> hmm. uh, excuse me. <coughs> Talk about cliffhanger. Okay. I'm going to leave you on the edge of your seat waiting for this story. <laughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> okay, so there's a reason. <clears throat> uh, Jacob has had 12 children, 12 sons. It's going to become the tribes that's recognized throughout eternity. <clears throat> Esau also is very prosperous. In fact, in today's reading, it says... <laughs> just like Abraham and Lot they had to separate the land where they were living would not support all of the wealth that both Jacob and Esau had so they had to separate go their separate ways and then it's given the descendants of and this is my thought as Jacob laid his head well, first of all, as Jacob laid to rest his precious Rachel on the path that God sent him on, God said, go. And along the way, his, his wife, Rachel, become pregnant, gave him his second son, Benjamin, died at childbirth. And he had to bury her before he got to where God told him to go. As he laid her to rest, he wasn't thinking about his conflict with Esau. As he laid down and laid his head to rest and blessed his sons the way his father had blessed him and Esau, he wasn't thinking about the conflict. And, and this is what rose up in me today. How many of us stand today on wanting to be right, whether it's in our marriage, 
I know I'm right. By golly, Lord, did you not hear what they said? They're wrong. And, and how many of us wants to stand on the fact that I was wronged to the point that whole families are divided? I mean, wars are fought mm -hmm. over these kind of things, when in the end, none of us are going to remember it anyway. We're not, I mean, I, I've learned something to do that has helped me tremendously in the last few years. And that is, I ask myself, when I'm really finding myself wanting to focus on a wrong, that somebody was wrong or somebody wronged me, or I'm wanting to get in my flesh and make sure, by golly, that I ask myself a year from now, will I even remember it? Six months from now, will I even remember this? And if I do remember it, will it matter? In the end, does it matter? Does it matter? And I just, I just see a picture of God's grace and his mercy, which leads me into Matthew today, where he talks about he doesn't want sacrifice. He wants mercy. He doesn't want us to give in because we're the martyr. He doesn't want us to give in because I'm better than. He doesn't want us to give in. He wants us to give mercy the way he's given mercy. That's what God wants from us. In fact, in uh, verse Matthew 12 is where we're at. Matthew 12, uh, verse 7. <clears throat> but you would not have condemned my innocent disciples if you knew the meaning of the scripture. I want you to show mercy, not sacrifice. See, see oftentimes we, we build ourselves up that, well, by golly, I forgave so-and-so. And, and we hold it as a medal of honor. And, and, and that means nothing to God. He doesn't, even, he doesn't even acknowledge that. He wants us to have so much mercy in our heart that we forgive because we love. He forgave us because he loved us. There's not anything so bad that we've done that God doesn't forgive us. We walk in God's mercy every single day. And, and the only mercy we're going to get in our life is the mercy we're willing to give. If I don't give mercy, then I'm not going to have mercy. And that's what this whole chapter in Matthew is all about. Is It's all about uh, the Sabbath, and his disciples were hungry, so they broke off some wheat because they were hungry, and the Pharisees chided him, said, oh my, you broke the law. That's a reason to kill you. And then Jesus says to him, you know, didn't David even and his companions when they're hungry, they actually went into the temple and ate the forbidden food in the temple because they were hungry. And then Jesus says in uh, chapter uh, 12, verse 11, if you had a sheep that fell into a well on the Sabbath, wouldn't you work to pull it out? You wouldn't leave that sheep in the well because it's the Sabbath. And of course you would. And how much more valuable is a person than a sheep? And I'm telling you guys, there's people that you're not forgiven. You're not willing to forgive them. You're not willing to let God help you to forget the wrongs that they're doing. See, it's impossible for us to forget it. But when we let God renew our minds, you'll find that the memory of what was done wrong fades away. God, God renews your mind and your thoughts. And that bitterness and that unforgiveness poisons us from the inside out. It literally will kill us. Go to any doctor that's not, that is not practicing what this book says and ask them what causes your high blood pressure and high cholesterol and almost every disease there is your irritable bowel syndrome your anxiety your depression and they'll tell you stress well what causes our stress well i guarantee you when you have unforgiveness in your heart and every time the name of that person comes up your blood pressure rises um 100 points that's stress that is the definition of stress and it will kill you from the inside out. And so I, 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 that's what I got out of today's reading is that we need to search our heart. Let God search our heart and find those places where bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness, it can be as big as, or it can be as small as. It can be as big as Jacob literally lied and stole Esau's birthright. But Esau forgave Jacob. 
Aesop forgave Jacob. And in here we read about so-and-so sleeping with, in fact, it was um, Jacob's son. Jacob's own son slept with his um, mm -hmm. concubine. Mm -hmm. <coughs> 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 Excuse me, do I? Reuben, his oldest son, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Reuben, his oldest son. And so, you know, there's nothing new under the sun. What's been done wrong to you, it's not new. There are others that have suffered the same way you've suffered. But God says, his word says, this is what he's saying to you. I want you to show mercy, not sacrifice. Don't do it for the sake of sacrifice. Don't do it to wear a medal of honor. Oh, I'll be the bigger person. No, do it because you're full of mercy. And if you're not full of mercy, and if you don't know how to forgive, that's when you humble yourself before the Lord and say, God, with me, this is impossible. It's impossible with me, but I'm, I'm yours. I'll allow you to do this work in me, and I don't care what it looks like. See, his plan is different than our plan. Jacob thought he had a life. He thought that he was set. He had gone back to his homeland. He had Rachel. He had his uh, other maids and the children that they'd had for him, and God said, get ready and move. His plan never looks like what we think it's going to look like because his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So anyway, I'll finish with the Proverbs. Um, uh, chapter 3, verses 21 and 26. My child, don't lose sight of common sense and discernment. Hang on to them, for they will refresh your soul. They are like jewels on a necklace. They keep you safe on your way, and your feet will not stumble. Now, these are some wonderful, wonderful promises that we can stand on. And all he's telling us to do is use the common sense that's a gift from God and the discernment, knowing the difference of right and wrong, another gift from God. He's telling us to use those. And then we'll, our feet won't stumble. That means we won't fail. You can go to bed without fear. Wow, no fear. You can go to bed and not have fear. <clears throat> you will lie down and sleep soundly. You're not sleeping good at night? Ask God what the source is. What's causing your inability to sleep at night? Let him do that work inside of you. Because here's the promise that you'll lie down and sleep soundly. And, and, and once you've started that work, use this scripture to, to uh, speak out loud that God's promise is for a sound sleep at night. <coughs> you need not be afraid of sudden disaster. Mm. Mm. Now, do I need to have common sense and discernment about whether or not there may be a nuclear bomb? Absolutely. Do I need to take note if... I get a warning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I need to take note, but do I have to have paralyzing fear? No, not even of a sudden disaster. I don't have to worry. Or the destruction that comes upon the wicked. For the Lord is your security. Right there is the promise. It doesn't matter what the storm is that's raging around us. God Almighty is our security. He will keep your foot from being caught in a trap. Now, those are words to live by. <laughs>